Hello everyone, welcome to Sea Academy YouTube channel. My name is Velilene Ngozi. In today's lesson, we discuss part 3 of human reproduction. We will be looking at gametogenesis, which is the formation of gametes by meiosis. Gametogenesis is divided into two parts. Uh, part 1 is spermatogenesis, while part 2 is ogenesis. We will also show the difference between spermatogenesis and neogenesis. Without wasting more time, let's get to it. Uh, this document that you see on your screen is an examination guideline from the Department of Basic Education. So today we will be looking at human reproduction. Uh, in human reproduction, we will focus on gametogenesis. Uh, the definition of gametogenesis is the formation of gametes by meiosis. And gametogenesis is divided into two parts. Uh, part one is spermatogenesis and uh, spermatogenesis is the formation of male gametes. And then oogenesis is the formation of female gametes. Uh, in male gametes, we talk about sperm cells and then female gametes. We're talking about egg cells or ovum. So I will discuss all these topics in full. So part one, let's start with spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis, which is the formation of male gametes. Uh, the process of spermatogenesis goes as follows. It's a, under the influence of testosterone. Diploid cell in the seminiferous tubule of the testis undergo meiosis to form hyploid sperm cells. So this is the process of spermatogenesis. When you are asked during examination to explain spermatogenesis, you can write in this form, you can write the process in this form, then you will get the full marks. So now let me explain this thing in full. So what happened is uh, we have testes. These are the testes and then in the testes, we have seminiferous tubule. So this is the tubule that is uh, inside the testes. This, the formation of sperm takes place inside the seminiferous tubules. And then these seminiferous tubules, if we cut it, uh, wanted to see inside, it contains a lot of cells. If you can see here, there are a lot of cells. These are the cells. These cells are the ones that goes through cell division are the ones that goes through meiosis and then at the end we, they will end up being sperm cells so these are the, the cells are called germinal epithelium cells these cells and then these cells of lading is the one that is responsible for secreting testosterone so this cell of leading secret testosterone and the testosterone is the one that activates germinal epithelium cells to go through meiosis to form sperm cells so now let's let me show you the process uh, here we have a germinal epithelium cell only one which is diploid uh, as human we have 46 chromosomes so this cell have 46 chromosomes and then it undergoes meiosis 1 so after meiosis 1 we have two cells each with 23 chromosomes so meiosis has half the number of chromosome from the, the the parent cell so these cells they contain 23 chromosome from 46 and then again these cells again they undergo meiosis 2 then after meiosis 2 each cell produces two cells two cells with the same number of chromosome therefore in total we have four daughter cells we have four cells with 23 chromosomes with the half uh, the number of the original cell and then these cells are haploid cells so by haploid it simply means they are the, the chromosome are not in pairs so these haploid cells are called spermatids which are sperm cells that are not yet matured so this is the result of meiosis after this meiosis has complete 
there is another process that is called a uh, spermatogenesis that is where uh, these spermatids are growing then they become uh, sperm cells uh, these spermatids grow some tails uh, create some organelles that uh, are required for a sperm to function perfectly so this process is called spermatogenesis then here we have matured sperm cell so from one cell inside the seminiferous tubule will produce four cells four complete sperm cells uh, which are haploid so they both contain 23 chromosomes so this is the process of spermatogenesis uh, next up about the exam guideline said we must know the structure of the sperm we must understand the diagram and then again functions of each part of the sperm cells which include acrosome the head with the hyploid nucleus a middle portion with mitochondria and the tail so we must know the functions of this part uh, first let's know how to label the sperm so sperm uh, is divided into three parts we have head we have middle we have tail the head contains acrosome and then it contains nucleus so nucleus uh, we know that it carries genetic materials and then the middle part is made up of mitochondria and then we have the tails so let me explain the functions uh, function of a nucleus nucleus contains 23 chromosomes which are hap haploid so we know that chromosome uh, contains genetic materials and then another function that i want us to talk about is the acrosome the acrosome contains enzyme to digest all of egg cell for fertilization so this acrosome is responsible for the sperm to passes through the layers of of the egg cell because the egg cell contains uh, some layers one of the layer is zona pellucida which is responsible for protection it protect the eggs so this acrosome will undergo a process that is called acrosomal reaction then that that reaction will end up with the sperm being able to enter the the ovum so this is the process the, the function of the acrosome and then another function is the function of the mitochondria the mitochondria provide energy for the movement of the sperm cell so for the sperm to move it need energy so this energy is produced inside the mitochondria via respiration and then another function of the part in a sperm is the function of the tail so the tail the long tail enable the spermatozoa to swim so as the spermatozoa is moving it has to it use the tail to to move forward so these are the functions that uh, we must be able to answer in in an examination we must understand them then uh, if you write the functions like this then we will get all the marks so this is all for the spermatogenesis now let's go to ogenesis so with the ogenesis uh, this is the process of ogenesis diploid cell in the ovary undergo mitosis to form numerous follicles and then at the onset of the puberty and under the influence of fsh one cell inside the follicle enlarges and undergo meiosis and then of the four cells that are produced only one survived to form a matured haploid cells and then this occur in a monthly basis so this is the process of ogenesis uh, during exam you have to write this if you are asked uh, to explain ogenesis then you will get all the marks is about six to seven marks in an examination so the process of ogenesis so let me explain it in in full uh, we have an ovary here this is an ovary inside the ovary we have uh, some cells these cells are called 
primordial germ cells. So these primordial germ cells, they will undergo mitosis, so to multiply themselves. So uh, then now, after the mitosis, we have a couple of cells. And then of these cells, there will be a hormone that is secreted inside the pituitary gland. Uh, this hormone is responsible for the growth of of these cells, the follicle cells. And then of these cells, only one will survive. Then the one that will survive is the one that is that has a possibility of being fertilized or possibility of being growth uh, until it complete all the circle so now uh, of these cells only one cell it grows and then this cell is diploid cell by diploid cell we mean it contains all the pairs of chromosome so it's a diploid cell and then since this cell is is the one that is growing then it will go through the process of meiosis so we had mitosis and then now this cell will go through meiosis and then here is the process of meiosis we have the, that one cell uh, we call it primary oocyte so this cell is diploid it contains 46 chromosome and then this cell now undergo meiosis so as it undergo meiosis one uh, one cell this cell as a diploid will produce a hyploid cell within the 23 chromosome and then again we have another hyploid cell which is 23 chromosome but this one is very small the small one we call it a polar body and then the bigger one this one has a bigger cytoplasm and then we call it secondary oocyte the secondary oocyte is the one that has the possibility of being fertilized this polar body it was just there to to decrease the number of chromosomes so it's not going anywhere it it sometimes it just degenerate is no longer continuing with the process and then again these cells they will go under meiosis 2 and then at the meiosis 2 uh, the secondary oocyte will produces uh, another big cell and then one a polar body so now we have a haploid cell with 23 chromosome and then we have four we have three polar bodies that is where they say uh, of four cells that are produced through meiosis only one will be a uh, an ovum only one here we have one ovum we have a uh, three polar bodies these polar bodies they will degenerate they they won't be fertilized so this is the process of uh, oogenesis we had one diploid and then it undergoes meiosis at the end we ended up with only one a uh, hyploid cell with three polar bodies this one they won't uh, go anywhere they will just degenerate and then according to the exam guideline again uh, we must know the structure of an ovum using the diagram and then we must know the functions of the different parts of the ovum including jelly layer hyploid nucleus and the cytoplasm so here we have uh, those parts uh, this is the ovum after it went through the my, my, meiosis uh, this is an hyploid it contains 23 chromosome uh, this is the jelly layer or a uh, zona pellucida some they call it and then this is the cytoplasm we have the nucleus inside the nucleus there is a nucleolus and then these are follicle cells so to explain the functions i will start with the function of a jelly layer and uh, the jelly layer provides protection to the eggs so the jelly layer uh, protect the eggs or the material inside the eggs and then it prevents too many spams from getting to the eggs at the same time so during fertilization only one sperm is allowed to enter inside the eggs so jelly layer is responsible 
to allow only one sperm to enter the sperm cell the the egg cell i mean so and then another function is the function of the nucleus so the nucleus it contains 23 chromosomes so this contains a uh, genetic material but it contains the hyploid number of chromosome only 23 so this 23 when it combined with 23 from the sperm cell they make 46 with the which, which is the total number of chromosome for a human being so this nucleus contains 23 chromosomes and then another function is the function of the cytoplasm the cytoplasm is responsible for nourishing nourishes the egg so uh, the cytoplasm supply the egg with food because it contains an egg yolk so after the the fertilization has taken place as the the zygote ha, has been produced this egg is not yet attached to the the mother so cytoplasm is responsible to feed the zygote it's the one that is responsible to supply the zygote with the food and the necessary stuff so this is the function of the cytoplasm it nourishes the egg so these are the functions that we must be aware of then we must make sure we understand them and then the next part i want to show the difference between spermatogenesis and then oogenesis so with spermatogenesis we have one diploid cell at the end we ended up with a uh, four haploid sperm cells so this sperm cell all the they have a capability of fertilizing an egg and then with oogenesis we have we also have one a uh, diploid cell but at the end we end up with only one ovum then the other are polar body these other are not uh, they don't have a capability of are not capable of being fertilized only one is capable of being fertilized so this is the difference between spermatogenesis and the oogenesis this one will produce four sperms while this one produces only one ovum but during fertilization only one sperm will fertilize this ovum so this ovum only need one sperm only one millions of sperm are produced and delivered to female reproductive system but at the end only one sperm will fertilize one egg so we need only one egg and one sperm to fertilize with ladies only one egg is produced one ovum is produced per cycle but with male many sperms are produced and delivered to the ladies uh, reproductive system but only one sperm will succeed in fertilizing that particular egg so these are the things that we must know is the spermatogenesis and then oogenesis please use this guideline to explain this stuff so if you are asked to explain spermatogenesis uh, use the this information here they are just three under the influence of testosterone Diploid cell in the semiphorous tubule of the testis undergo meiosis to form hyploid cell. And then if you are asked to explain oogenesis, uh, you can say diploid cell in the ovary undergo mitosis to form numerous follicles. And then at the onset of pu puberty and the, under the influence of FSH, one cell inside the follicle enlarge and undergo meiosis. Of the four cells that are produced, only one survived to form a matured hyploid ovum. And then this process occurred in a monthly cycle. So this is the oogenesis. Use this information here when you are asked during examination. This is all for today. If you watch this video to this far, thank you very much. Please consider subscribing so that our channel can grow. Then we will make uh, research so that we can give you a good content and if you are studying i say good luck with your studies thank you very much